And for some of you, you might be saying, this is kind of weird, I've never done this before. Well, we're not going to do anything weird. We're doing everything biblical. And, and the scriptures tell us that when we're, we are still, and when we meditate on him, he responds. Do you know our worship and our meditation and the setting of our hearts on him is like a magnet. It draws him. And so this morning, let's be drawers. Amen. We, we're, we're on the negative. We're drawing the positive. So they both connect. Amen. You get what I'm saying in magnet, magnets. So let's just right where you are. Would you just simply close your eyes? And I just want, I want to encourage you right now just to, just to meditate on the name of Jesus. Because this is why we're here. We're here to, to meditate on him, to worship him, right? And all who he is and all that he is. He is holy and righteous. He's eternal. He's the God that never changes. And he's called you not just servants any longer. He calls you not just his friend, but he calls you brethren, saints. So this morning we come, we say to you, Father, that you are our God. And that there are no other gods besides you. You are worthy of our praise and our exhortation. And today we turn our full undivided attention to you and say, Blessed, blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who sits on the throne. Blessed is he who, who suffered and died but rose again. Blessed is he who calls on us not just to be friends but to be brethren in him we worship you come on just start speaking i worship you make that personal i worship you this morning i bless you this morning i glorify you hallelujah hallelujah
Oh
ready to uh, celebrate the communion table. And I'd like for those who are going to be serving us today, if they would come and just kind of stand off this side. We're going we're gonna to just prepare ourselves. For those of you that are visiting, you are certainly welcome to join us in, in, in the area of participating um, in the area of communion. And so we want to invite you there. But let me just say just a couple of things. There is no other practice of religion that can proclaim a truth like that of the communion table. There's nothing. There's nothing, nothing, nothing that can proclaim a truth, the, the truth, like the communion table. Now, the communion table is not just elements. It's not just a part of, uh, you know, what we do in a service. This is just a Christian thing. It's not, it's way, way, way more than that. It is literally, it is literally our stepping and sitting at the feet of Jesus and partaking and celebrating what he has done. And there's two sides of the communion table. It's one, it's the remembrance of two sides. And that is what he has done and what he has accomplished. And then that participation that we are privileged to participate. So when we take and, and the ushers begin to uh, allow or set people out to begin to line up, I want you just to come around and take your elements and uh, go back to your chairs as we will we will celebrate together. Um, and if you have children, um, you, your mom and dad, you legislate whether where they're at and whether they understand or what have you. Um, I would, well, I want to leave that to you, please. Um, but we're going to just break bread together and celebrate. And there's so much more we have going on in the service. Uh, and so let's just continue to worship. Amen.
to the one who's made us worthy. He has made us worthy. To thank him, not just that he made us, not only that he's just made us worthy, but to thank him for his grace and mercy and his incredible, undying, undeniable love for us. Would you just be thankful today? Let's be thankful. He hears every whisper, every heart, every thought. Just be thankful. I thank you, God. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. 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 You worship. is still resounding the same words as often as you take and eat of this bread do it in remembrance of me that's what we just did with our hearts of thanksgiving and then he broke it the scripture says and he gave thanks let's give again thanks we thank you for the body the perfect lamb sacrifice that paid for all of our sins not just some it broke the powers of darkness and the strongholds of that darkness. Just by your sacrifice, we give thanks. So now let's take and let's eat together. Here we go. The song we just sang, I Plead the Blood. It's kind of a new song that we're singing here, but a song has been all over the radio, all over the place. The blood. There's, there is power in the blood. There is healing, even in the body, but it's also in the blood. And when the blood is applied to us, our lives, His blood seals us to Him. And we are now in the new covenant, and we are sealed in that new covenant, in the promises that were forwarded by that new covenant. Oh, by the blood. The blood. Oh, the precious blood. Oh, the precious blood. Come on, say that with me. Oh, the precious blood. Nothing can wash us whiter than snow but the blood of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Father. We thank you that it still holds true to this day. In Jesus' name, let's drink it. Let's give him a wonderful, warm thank you by clap offering and praise. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. I'll take this time to ask the ushers to come forward for our tithes and offerings. Ushers, if you would please come forward. This is the time that we can give. 
give back to what um, all of the blessings that God has given us. It's funding that helps this church body, it helps this community, and it helps the missions that we support. And I know we're going to hear one mission later, which I'm excited about. So think of that when you place that offering of what it's doing for God's kingdom, because that's what's important. So let's pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, and we just ask, Lord, that you would bless the first fruits that people are going to place in, and that they're going to give with, um, with a cheerful heart, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just multiply it in such a mighty way, Lord, for your kingdom, for your purpose, for the salvation of our loved ones, Lord. We give it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. And these days, uh, just so that you know, um, we, we, everything is given by way of a tithe and an offering. If it's not specially designated, 10% of that goes into our missions fund, which, by the way, that missions fund actually continued through the whole pandemic. And we did not miss even a, a, a gift to any of the missionaries. And so I just want... I just would like for you, amen. So we're excited. Um, we're also excited to kind of present something to you by way of video clip. Take a listen and a watch. It's coming. Okay, that was, was that the hole? I don't know, I don't know, Chris? No, it wasn't the hole. You wanna try it again because it's important. getting it started now we're having a hard time getting it off I mean what is that okay um, I want to tell you this is a, such a handy work and when she sent it to me and I watched it I thought oh my golly this girl she deserves all of our weight and gold given to her she's so amazing of how she just cre she gets an idea she creates around that idea and she comes up with something like that so October 8th, right? October 8th is going to be a very special Sunday, it's very, very special service. Um, and um, the Connect Group has uh, leaders they, and groups. Uh, they have something kind of really fun and funny and 
It's going to get a little radical, so if you like quiet religion, that's probably the Sunday you may not want to be because it's going to be good, but it's going to be fun. So we want to just invite all of you that are visiting um, or not visiting and you're watching on, we'd love for you to come and just experience that Sunday. It's refreshing, refreshing, and awesomely cool. Um, there, we are entering into probably the last um, third of the the year, whereby all of the holidays um, are all lining up. And so we start with various things, and one, and particularly we start with our light tonight. Um, our light tonight, and I know there are people that are walking around saying, well, you're celebrating um, Halloween. We are not celebrating. There's nothing about celebrating Halloween in there. We are literally taking the light, and we are applying it to serving, giving, loving, and we're hopefully, if you are, if you can do like skit, or if you're used to doing skits, or you would like to do skits, or if you would like to do a part, we want to do something on the main floor um, a couple of times that night as part of a gospel presentation. Um, there's some new things that will be happening. Um, it's our time to give, and that's that's what we do. It's a safe place for them to come, and many of them will will only come. Will 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 have only would have come only to something like that and never would have dressed, addressed our doors by way of being a part of the church until, and listen, we've had people, we have people that came to the church, they threw light the night, so there is fruit. Can we use more fruit? We sure can. But you know what? I'm thankful for every soul that gets to meet Jesus. And so we're doing more to present it. We're expanding. Uh, we've got all kinds of things. You'll be hearing more about that. But um, next Sunday, we will be heading, uh, putting out the basket for those of you that, if you wouldn't mind bringing some candies and that sort of thing, we're going to just, uh, we're going to have candies. They're going to walk into a, like an outside and they're going to be getting their candy, but they got to visit biblical stations. And so this is, this is part of doing the gospel in their language so they, they can understand. So if you'd like to be a part of the team to do a little bit of acting, um, please see Linda. She's at a women's retreat right now, or even see myself because we want to try to get that into some practicing right there. Um, there's another thing that is coming up. It's called the Alight Center Banquet. It will be 1019 uh, from 6 to 9. It's a complimentary dinner, and it's a fundraiser for, um, for literally saving babies. Um, it's a pro-life. Obviously, we're a part of that. They're part of our missions. Um, so we're, we're into, uh, into this particular ministry. Um, uh, Linda, 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 she's over there. She's going to be out, out there um, after the service. And if you want to just ask some questions, that sort of thing, the baby bottles will be coming. We are in, in, in process for that or in, in plan for that. Um, and that's where you take a bottle home. Put cans. We, the bottom line is we love life, amen, and we love the unborn. And we'd like for both the unborn and life to continue until the day of Jesus. Amen. So let's, uh, let's make sure that we, we jump on board of that. Um, next Friday, next Friday, um, we will be um, having uh, our first Friday, every, every first, every top of the month, the first Friday of that month, um, we have a time where we call. Um, to a place of prayer and for those of you that would like to fast um, and we come in here we spend a little time worship we pray um, we do it, it it will be online again I believe this year uh, this this particular session um, we want to we we need breakthrough amen we need breakthrough and through the generations of those young generations they need to see uh, Jesus in his real form and not a puppet form. Amen. So we want to we want to be able to do that. So we want to invite you to do that. Also, um, there will be no GLC, no Gen Life Church, uh, Connect next Friday. If you want to if you want to if you're planning on coming, come to prayer. Amen. Let's let's just let's start praying for that young generation and let be great to have that representation um, there. Um, water baptisms. We've already got people starting to sign up. Uh, you can go online. You just go right down. There's a there's a place you can sign up online at, at uh, CLC um, uh, Church CLChurch.cc CLChurch.cc. Please um, sign up. We would love to absolutely um, have you to be a part of that. Also, I know there's a lot of a lot of things, but we need to hear this. 
We are also preparing for Operation Christmas Child, the Christmas boxes. They will be setting up a little display out there. Again, this is our time to give, and I know times are tough. So whatever little we all give, it makes a whole lot. Amen? And so whatever little bit you can do for Light the Night, for um, Operation Christmas Child, these are things that um, are, are dear to us. And then we are also going to have a few families that we will post um, once we figure out who they are, that we want to be able to bless a family or two in around Christmas as well. So there's a lot of giving. I understand we don't talk a lot about money. Uh, Tammy does a great job, but that's just, that's pretty much the length of um, of what we do as far as talking about money. But this this season, we just want to continue to be a blessing. How many? Amen. Is everybody okay with that? Well. We have a, a, a few moments, uh, we've probably got 15 or so minutes. Um, we we're gonna kind of release um, our sister, Amy, and, and tribe, I wanna say. Our missionaries, they are a part of our missions support program and some of you are giving to that. They are doing a marvelous, amazing job. It's amazing how little they have and how much they're able to do. And it's about ministering to people really in a third world and so we are we are so grateful that they're part of our church family they've been away uh, ministering places so that um, in order to raise some funds because they want to go back and they want to do even bigger things their vision is way bigger than than them and that's always the best vision to have amen because it stretches us and so i want to just invite amy if you would like to come forth oh daughter of the Most High. Amen and amen. Let's give them a warm welcome. Good morning, good morning. Um, before we start, I'm all about kids, right? So I have a little video to let you all know what it feels like, because our, our little topic is the unwavering yes. So if they can cue it, and hopefully we can get it up there, it's a video for all the kids, whether you're a kid or a kid in Harvard. Often when I'm following God, I'm like looking back and like, you still got me, right? You still got me, right? Um, so I love that because I thought that that was the adequate thing of our faith. So um, our little tiny talk is about our unwavering yes. And we'll see if they can get my slideshow up. Ah, look at that. Okay, so we can go to the next one. So we are part of Morph Mexico, for those of you who don't know. Um, and we wanted to let you know that God's calling requires our constant yes to him. And so by the end of this little thing, I want you to challenge you that you continue to walk in your yes to God. So we can go to the next one. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but when God called us, I said, huh, sorry, I think you got the wrong person. We're a family of six or eight. We have six kids. We just sold everything for our adoption. We had um, lost the child. You know, God, I don't know that you called the right person. 
Has anybody ever felt like, God, I don't know if you called the right person because I sure was a nap. But in, I realized that I was often like Moses because in Exodus 3.11, Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And in 4.13, he said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send somebody else. And I might be the only one who struggles with this, but I was like, please, Lord, send anybody else. Yes, I want to do your will. I want to be your servant. I want to honor you. But I don't think you really know what you're getting in this package. I struggle with ADHD. What are you going to do? Um, so then we can go to the next one. Um, so have you ever felt unqualified, undeserving, and inadequate? I went to Bethel School of Supernatural, which I graduated. Yay. Um, and something that Bill Johnson said that completely wrecked me was you cannot disqualify yourself because you are not the qualifier, only God is. And that wrecked me. I thought of all the wisdom I've learned in Bethel, that might be the one I'm going to take. Um, so I want to say that again to y'all. You cannot disqualify yourself for what God has called you to do because you are not the qualifier, only God is. So if he's calling you to do something, do it because you'll see how amazing your yes can be. Okay. Maybe. We can go to the next one. Okay, Exodus 3.12. I'm going to have my husband come read this for you. Um, I don't know if you all, I always thought that the burning bush was about the burning bush. Um, and it wasn't, spoiler alert, um, the thing that God talked to me most about. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames from within a bush. Moses saw the bush. It was on fire, but it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go and see this strange thing, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over, God called from him within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now a cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So go now, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you <clears throat> that is, it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Okay, so we can go to the next slide, because in my awesomeness, I somehow missed the story that God has seen their oppression. He has heard their cries. He knows their suffering. He has intervened. God intends to rescue them. God is providing a new homeland, and God is sending Moses. To me, that was the miracle that I missed in the whole story. And it was this thing as I prepared to go on the mission field and was like, okay, God, what is my calling? What am I supposed to do? And God let us, we can go to the next one. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, before I get there. Um, what was God's call, and more importantly, could we trust him? So, like I kind of hinted before, we had lost our daughter. We, um, she died at five and a half, and we had to bury her. Um, and we got hurt, right? Um, it is a heart hurt that is not easy to heal. And so I began a faith journey of, can I trust God? And for somebody who grew up in the church, that's a hard question to all of a sudden have to answer. You know, all of the things, God is so, so good, he's still so, so good, but how do you justify that with losing a daughter? So he took us on this faith journey of learning that we could trust him, and I'm gonna show you kind of how. And we had to make the decision, because God often gives us the choice, right? He doesn't make us do anything, he gives us the choice. 
So we decided that we were going to give him our unwavering yes. We can turn. See, we had gone down to Mexico, we had gone on the mission field, and as you, most of you know, we were giving food bags out, we were doing all these things, because God knows their suffering. We started um, kind of going around and asking God where we're supposed to be, and he showed us this community in Las Aves. See, most of the people there are indigenous. Um, they speak Chiqui, Mixteco, Nahuatl. There's like 800 languages in Mexico, which most people don't know. Um, they are living in cardboard and plastic houses on dirt floors. Um, they are tribes that are living together but amongst themselves. So they're little segregated communities within a community and they often are fighting with one another. Um, there's so many hardships in that, like our, um, our moms, most of our moms are single moms. Um, the ones that are, they go to work, they make $15 a day. Um, their food prices are the same as ours. So God had heard their cry. See, we were running this breakfast club, which I think some of you have seen pictures about. We had like 150 kids. I was like, God, we're doing what you called us to do. I said my yes, this is awesome. We're doing what you want to do. Until we were at one of this breakfast club and this mama came up to me and she had tears in her eyes and she's like, ayuname, ayuname, which I know means help me, help me, but I couldn't understand the rest. And there was such a desperation in her, in her eyes and in her tears. And I pulled aside one of our translators and I'm like, you have to help me. How do I pray for this lady when all I know is she's asking me to help her? And so he starts translating for me and they tell me how she had lost her children. She doesn't know if they're the human traffickers or to the orphanage, but somebody had come and taken her children while she was at work. Well, see, we were wondering why all of a sudden our children numbers were fluctuating. We were, we were losing some of our children and we didn't know why. Well, it was because they were being taken, some rightfully by the orphanage, not really rightfully, but in hopes of giving them a better life, and some by human traffickers, which are very prevalent in the area. As this woman comes to me and she's crying and she's crying, the guy who's next to me, he's like, aren't you gonna open the daycare? Everybody here says you're gonna open the daycare. And I was like, mm, I think you've heard wrong. I don't think that's what I'm gonna do. So he was like, no, you don't understand. And then ne next week, another mama comes, and she's crying, and her children are gone. And I was like, God, don't you care? Don't you care about these mamas? And so like all good Christians, I ran away to Bethel. Um, I ran away to a church far away, and was like, God, what do I do? I I'm not equipped to do this. I don't have the finances. I have six children of my own. I'm not equipped. What do I do? But I can't leave these moms so desperate. Because she said, either I go to work, and they get taken, or I stay home and they starve. As a mom, I couldn't imagine that. I'm seeing the case, faces of these kids, I'm falling in love with them, and I can't imagine saying, okay, you get to eat, and now I have to go to work, and hopefully you're okay. See, God had heard their cries. We can go to the next one. God intended to rescue them. He intended for me to open the daycare, but I didn't see how. See, when I was at Bethel, God said to me, do you think you love them more than me? Do you think that you care about them more than me? Because I had fallen in love with these children and these mamas. And he broke me. No, God, I don't love them more than you. I know you love them more than me, but why are you leaving them here? And he said, because you are supposed to say yes. If you can say yes, I will be alongside of you to help you do what you need to do. So I did, and God is providing miraculously. We were given a building, which you'll see in a minute, and we have it for five years without rent. See, the lady of the town said to me, you're the one who's supposed to open it, but I didn't know she owned the whole town. So when I stepped in and said, yes, here, it's yours for five years. Do what you need to do with it. So we are. There is many times when we can't afford to feed our kids, and there are many times when we have the miraculous, which I never thought I would be up here saying, where we scoop food and we don't have enough. And we're watching and I'm going, oh God, we're not going to be able to feed everybody. And somehow, without skipping portions, because I'm always like, maybe give them a little less. Because, you know, the human side of me, I'm like, mm. But you know what? Every time, God gives them more and enough. And we have more and enough. And we're often, you know, sometimes we're a week behind in rent, but God always provides. It cost me 1200 a week to run the daycare. Can I tell you how I get it? I have no idea. God always provides. He is sending us and those who will follow after us to these people. We can go to the next one. 
This is my family, my new family. This is the Guadaria de las Aves of North Mexico. Um, these are some of our kiddos and our staff standing out front of the building. These are our cuna babies. Um, food baskets are over here. See, so we, every, we got the favor of the government. How many people can say that they have the favor of the government of Mexico? All of a sudden, they showed up at my door and they're like, we heard about what you're doing. You can't give up. These people count on you. You need to keep doing what you're doing. So I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna provide. And they said, well, if you keep doing what you're doing, we'll give a bag of food to every family that's in your program. So every, one of the, every month, we get a bag of food that we give to give our kiddos so that they go home. Because most of our kiddos are suffering a pretty bad malnutrition. Um, we eat with the kids. We're one family at the Guadaria. So this is inside of the Guadaria with our staff. Um, the lady right there, the older lady, she's a cook. We call her um, Abuelita. Um, we can go to the next one. Um, we do everything from homework help and schooling to being a safe place and a dry place where kids can rest um, to lice. We have a big lice problem at our daycare. Um, so we are constantly, the way we combated it is we have salon. So we will make it sound fancy and give the kids lots of bows. They pick out their hairstyle and it becomes a thing of pride and not a thing of shame. Good pride, not bad pride. See, God is awesome in provision because as we were starting to open the daycare, um, my daughter who passed away was in a wheelchair, right? And I said to my husband, I feel like God's telling me to put in a wheelchair ramp. And he was like, uh, we don't have the budget for that. I was like, I know, but God said do it. He's like, all right, he's been faithful so far. If you feel like you need to do it, do it. So I did it, and right after that, Adriana showed up. She is wheelchair bound. She is looking at my husband in that photo because she thinks he's the funniest thing in the world. Um, I don't know where she gets that from, but she thinks he's great. Um, <laughs> and God knew our need and her need before she ever arrived. So we can switch to the next one. See, this is brothers. Felipe is the little baby. And um, Antonio is the older boy. See, Felipe, when he came into our program, he was 18 months and 12 pounds. He was suffering from severe malnutrition. He couldn't hold his head up. He couldn't anything. Those of you who follow my Facebook, and um, he was the one running in the video where my husband picked him up like Lion King. Um, he now walks, and not only walks, but runs. He has gained three kilos, which is like six and a half, seven pounds. And his brother, Antonio, he was the one who would take care. So what I didn't mention, most of our kids, the older siblings take care of the younger siblings at home. So they don't go to school. So Antonio has not been in school. He has one arm that's smaller than the other and one leg that's smaller than the other. That's why Felipe was suffering because as much as his brother tried to feed and care for him, he's also disabled and would struggle to give him what he needs. But both of them have made huge leaps and bounds. And Antonio is picking up Spanish, or picking up English faster than I'm picking up Spanish, which is so not fair. Okay, we can switch to the next slide. This is Brian. So some of our stories are really happy, like Felipe and Antonio, and some of our stories are a little more heartbreaking. Um, Brian is severely abused at home. Um, our whole reason for being is we want to keep families together, but we have counseled a dad, and he has walked away from mom at the moment because of abuse. Mom was the abuser in the scenario. Um, I talked to Brian yesterday. Um, he doesn't realize that my Spanish is not very good and he will talk to me like a hundred miles a minute even though I don't understand him. So, um, but this is Brian and then we can switch. Okay, so here's something I get to do that's really cool. See this little boy right here? This is Frankie. Frankie is the witch doctor's son in our area. So they... <laughs> They are raising him up to be the next witch doctor because he's the only boy in their family. And I get to speak the name of Jesus over him. I get to speak his new identity. I get to tell him who he is and what he was made for and what he was created for. And it is one of my favorite jobs. I get to sing um, a whole bunch of songs over him. I love it. It's one of my favorites. So we can switch to the next slide. Okay, this is Alonzo is with the orange popsicle. And Santiago is with the red. Santiago is full of it. He is your like typical boy. Um, Alonzo has autism. So see, their mom couldn't go to work in the fields because nobody could handle Alonzo. Well see, God knows what he's doing, but because before I became a missionary, me and my husband worked at the Center for Disability Services and got to work with a lot of children with autism. So much to his mother's dismay, 
and happiness. He, has, he now has three words. He was nonverbal. One of them being mas, meaning more. One of them being asius, which is his form of, of gracias. And one of them being Amy. And so his mom was like, um, can you teach him, mama? Um, and I was like, yeah, of course. But she, when she heard him for the first time say something, she bawled. She bawled so bad in my office. And she said, you have no idea what God is doing through you. So we can switch to the next slide. Okay, so I was going to have to give you a really heartbreaking story. But God is so good. So this is Zoe. See, Zoe was my heartbreak story. I love Zoe. Zoe goes everywhere with me. I have this little posse of children that I won't even let me go to the store, which is down the hill, like they have to go with me. Zoe is one of them. See, Zoe's dad, in desperation when I left, she had been um, assaulted in, at home by a neighbor. And so he moved and she got assaulted again by a neighbor while I was gone. And then her mom left them and abandoned them. And so I offered to put them up and I tried to do everything I could to keep Zoe safe. And Dad's, Zoe's dad decided to give her to another program. But we had told him this program was a human trafficking program. See, there is really no program that would want a seven-year-old for a nanny in the United States and promise all these things. But they don't know that, so they believe it. He thought he was protecting her from future abuse, and he put her in this life. And I grieved so hard. My heart was broken. We had no idea where her and her siblings were. We cried and cried and cried, and we cried out to God, and we had other churches crying out to God for us. Well, two days ago, I got a phone call. See, it's hard to be excited when I say this, because you'll all think I'm bad, but Zoe and her sister were found in an ICU in Ensenada. See, but you know what? God preserved their life, and they're safe. And we talked to their dad. He's been reconnected with them. The mom has come back into the picture. Their family is whole and happy, and they're excited to come back. I love this little girl, and God has big things in store for her. We can go to the next one. See, one of the things that's really neat about our program, and these are our staff, they're all single mamas. All of our staff that are employed except for one is a single mom. See, these three are on the, or four, sorry, these, no, three, sorry, um, are, all grew up in the orphanage. They, so they speak some English, but they all grew up in the orphanage, and so they know what it's like to be in the orphanage, and they are want so hard to protect others against that. So we're really blessed to have these three women. We can switch to the next one. So, now what? I want to challenge you, because I want you to practically know what God is calling you to, but how do you know that? I, I sat in the seat for so long going, God, what is my calling? What am I supposed to do? And he just kept telling me one step forward, do the next right thing, give your unwavering yes, say yes over and over again. So I want to challenge you that one unwavering yes after another brings you to your destiny and calling. See, we have ways that you can partner with us. We have sponsorships and ways that you can raise awareness. And I'm glad Pastor went back there, so hopefully he doesn't hear me. We're trying to raise trips to come down at some point. It's a secret, see Naomi. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, God is so good. We want you guys to be a part and be involved. And so after all of this, we're going to have a time where you can go down and meet and talk with us. We have finger sandwiches, I think. We have something that we can feed you if you want to come down and learn more about Morph Mexico and how to sponsor and love us. So we just want to take the time to introduce you to some of our kiddos and the things that are going on there and tell you that God is so good. We are now up to about 30. We had a little lull of kids this week. We have about 30 and we're anticipating another 20 more to return after, um, after like middle of October because that's when the season for strawberries starts. Okay, hold on. Can my kids come up? See, I got you. I'm missing my baby. She's at the baby today for the moment. Okay. So I'm Amy, for those of you who don't know. That's my husband, Caleb. Maya Leah. Gianna. Elijah, Azaria, Athena, and then our youngest baby is really is at the babysitters. Hey, 
minute. I'm going to ask for those of you that would like to, would you maybe go down there that way? Um, if you would just gather around them, we're gonna, so those of you that, that would like to, I want you just to come and let's encircle them. We're going to pray over them and then we'll, of course, um, so those of you that would like to come. And while you're coming, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take this clip um, that you just did and we're going to work it so that we can put it on our website. Um, so that, because I think more people need to hear this story. Amen. And so we want to be a promoter. Amen. Oh, got it? Hallelujah. Thank you guys for coming. This is awesome. Hallelujah. You know, Father, the most amazing thing is that you are the qualifier, not us. And you have qualified Amy and her her family team and husband, you have qualified them to do the impossible. And so, Father, we're asking you as a family, church family, Lord, that you would multiply, multiply the blessings that they would not have to be worried about where it's coming from, but that provision has already been there. And that they could do and fulfill what you have called, ordained, and purposed them. So as a family, we pray over them. We pray protection over them and their village. We thank you for the favor that you've given them by the government. But we also know that there's enemies of darkness that surround that camp. But we thank you that your soldiers, your army stands guard around that camp. And we pray peace and safety and great provision, multiplied provision in every form, in every manner, in workers. We pray for the mamas that, um, that are doing it alone, that are giving themselves to serve and to care for even other people's children when they in themselves have the need. We're asking for a powerful, a powerful, fresh outpouring of your love, your grace, your peace your strength, your everything, that all of the kingdom promises would literally fall on that village and this ministry. We are so thankful to be accounted among her and their family and the families that they, they present and represent and all of the above in Mexico. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the gifts that they are to both here, but more so there. We bless you, Lord. Strength and health to them. Fresh word, fresh anointing, strength beyond measure. We're asking these things. We're believing these things because you are the God of these things. And you do not make mistakes by whom you've sent by whom you have given the responsibilities. So we love you and we thank you and we worship you, God, that they are part of our family and we are a part of their family and that their family and this family here are a part of the family in Mexico because we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we give you praise and glory. You've made these things possible. For it's in the precious, glorious, wonderful name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, amen. amen and amen. Let me remind you that you can go right on down to the fellowship hall and, um, and feel free. And you can ask them questions. They're, they're, they're going to be down there. Um, and so let's just go down and love on them. I know it's a busy time. It's a little late uh, because of the service, but that's okay. It's worth it. God's richest blessings to you and yours until we meet again. God bless you. Amen and amen.